Dr. Tanu Chopra will deliver the keynote address. Dr. Danu Chopra did his engineering from Thapar University, Patiala, and M.Tech, and a doctorate in pavement engineering from Peck University. He is an assistant professor and industrial training coordinator at Thapar University since 13 years. He is a member of many national and international bodies of highways and regularly regular publishes his work on highways. We are honored by his presence today. Now I request Dr. Tanu Chopra to come up on the stage, please. Chief guest and the dignitaries on the dais and off the dais. So today I'm here to deliver a lecture on the design of the flexible pavements. So first of all, I congratulate uh, Mr. Gay for organizing such wonderful workshop, uh, which is a very much present need of an hour for the regarding the design of the flexible payment because of the revised guidelines. And again, thankful to you for inviting such uh, speakers like Dr. Bose and Mr. Cha who are the pioneer in developing this guidelines of IRC 37. So to start with uh, one, so as per the director sir of NITR, the civil engineering as per his advice should be mixed with the uh, artificial intelligence or other branches of the engineering. So presently sir, we are working on one such instance which is related to the roads that we are developing a payment maintenance management system that is a type of the management system for the maintenance programs for our city roads and for even for the other high category roads also. So there we are collecting the distresses data, the failures data from the last five years we are collecting the data. And based upon the genetic programming techniques and other artificial intelligence techniques, we are developing the models to bring out that we can predict the distresses. And based upon that prediction of the distresses, we can design the maintenance strategies for that. So today workshop will, as an overall part will be there will be a different lectures after the inaugural session uh, that will be related to the first start with the guys sir will be regarding the basic definitions and the basic terminology which is used and then the subsequent advanced lectures along with the demonstration. So to start with uh, the first part a very well statement a very useful statement that the good roads are an asset and the bad roads are the debt for the nation. So, if we are not designing properly, if we are not constructing properly, and if we are not maintaining properly, this are leading to the disaster. So, like the word used earlier, smart infrastructure. So, we are constructing, we are designing, constructing, but somehow we are not able to maintain our infrastructure. So, that is also the part of our civil engineers or the government officials and the private one to have a certain strategies to maintain that also properly. Because this is a very important statement, which you will see that from the American, former American President John Kennedy, that the American roads are not good because America is rich, but America is rich because America has the good roads. And just below the photograph, if you will see, this photograph is of the, somewhere in the National Highway photograph, and it is six month old photograph. The age of the payment at this part is a six months. So they are suffering from the different operating patterns. So that we have to see is the codal guidelines are there. We are designing as per the 37 guidelines, but still the failures are there. Either so, पहले का बात करें तो 2012 के codal guidelines से हम design कर रहे थे. Now we are designing it with the 2018 guidelines, but still, if we are getting such type of the failure within the six months of the construction, so we have to look out that it is not only about the crust design, the thickness. It is there is something other parameters also which has to be looked or taken care into that. So as a payment composition to start with, as a flexible payment, this is a very common composition that we have a subgrade, granular subbase, wet mix macadam, dense bituminous macadam and the bituminous concrete. So as per the design methodology, this is a very conventional one, but if you will look out that in the 2012 and the 2018 guidelines, we have a many more compositions, payment compositions have been given in that. There is a different six composition. I still remember a meeting with the member finance of NHEI when we are doing the project of Jammu Udhampur. So that is with respect to the 2012 guidelines. So at that, that time, Mr. Chandra was saying that he was with the IRC 37 guidelines. Uh, so we'll continue with the lecture part. So I was discussing that this is the pavement composition crust, which is there. 
So, as per our that meeting where we are discussing with uh, Mr. Satish Chandra, the member finance of the NHA and the member technical there. So, he, at, during the meeting, he was with the uh, IRC 37 2012 guidelines with him. That uh, at that time, the other team members from the FCONS and the Shapoji Palanji were also there. So, they were discussing that why only the first composition which is given in the code about this subgrade GSP, WMM, DBM, and PC. There are the five different other compositions also given in the IRC 37 codes with the different other layers. So, but none of the contractor or none of the designer, if the designer is proposing also, but still uh, that is being not being implemented. So, there were the certain uh, queries or certain doubts created by the concessionaire there also. So, that we will discuss in the subsequent <coughs> part. So, with the scope of IRC 37, what basically the IRC 37 is, it is used for the design of the flexible payment and that too if the traffic is 2 MSA or more. So MSA stands for the million standard Excel. So we design the flexible payment having the standard Excel repetitions more than 2 millions by using IRC 37 with standard Excel, the single Excel with the dual wheels on the both side. And if we want to design the lesser than 2 MSA, so we have the guidelines IRC SP 72 which is being used for the design of the flexible payment for the low volume. And similarly, for the rehabilitation techniques, we are using at present for the national highway and other important roads, the falling weight deflectometers using IRC 115 guidelines and the BPD survey using IRC 81 guidelines. So the philosophy, so this is a very important part uh, because what I want is that we should be able to learn uh, very wisely from the lectures of Dr. Bose and Mr. Ja. So we have to understand what is the philosophy of IRC 37 or what is the philosophy of the design of the flexible payments. So the philosophy means that the payment should perform satisfactory functionally as well as structurally. So this is the most important part that whatever the payment surface we are designing or we are constructing that should perform very well functionally as well as structurally. So functionally means so with respect to the riding quality or with respect to the drainage aspect the functional parameters should be very well designed and similarly the structural parameter means the cracking patterns, rutting patterns, they again has to be taken care while designing the crust for the flexible payments. So and that is they should perform satisfactory. So satisfactory means we have fixed in the IRC 37 certain performance standards like there are two major type of the defects one is the rutting and other one is the cracking, fatigue cracking. So we have fixed up the standard that if the rutting value is more than 20 mm in the payment surface. So we will call it as there is a failure in the flexible payment surface and if the cracking is more than 20% of the paved area in that particular section, so that we will call it as a failure part. So that means both the rutting and the fatigue characteristics, they should be within this limits within the design life of the payment surface. So our overall effort will be as a designer will be that throughout the standard Excel repetition, whatever the standard Excel repetitions will be there in the design life, the payment should perform satisfactory both in terms of functional as well as the structural components. So these are the performance indicators of any payment. Functionally the roughness is very important and similarly the cracking of the surface and the rating of the different layers. So now how the IRC 37 has been developed from the first 1970 then to the further additions and earlier code revision, the very earlier one, the 1970, it is only based upon the empirical, only based upon the experience parameters. <laughs> But the new one after the 2001 and 2012 and 18 guidelines, they are based upon the mechanistic empirical approach. So what that means is, so that one point is very clear that we are rating the performance of the payment with respect to certain mechanistic parameters. And that two parameters are, one is the vertical compressive strain at the top of the subgrade and other one is the horizontal tensile strain at the bottom of the bituminous surfaces. So that means in the code, in the mechanistic empirical approach, they have correlated two major mechanistic parameters. So one is the vertical compressive strain at the top of the subgrade. So that will be responsible for causing the rutting in the subgrade and the subsequent layers. And similarly, the horizontal tensile strain at the bottom of the bottom bituminous layer, that means at the bottom of the DBM, that will be responsible for the bottom up cracking that is called as a fatigue cracking. So you will be looking at the photographs for that. So that means, see I already stated that the rating should be within 20 mm. So that means what we have to control is, we have to control, we have to first check why the rating is occurring. Rating is because of the vertical compressive strain at the top of the subgrade. So that means whatever we are going to design, the nature of the layer and the crust. So that should be such that whatever we are designing, 
throughout the design life, the rating should be less than 20. And similarly, the cracking should be less than 20% of the fifth part. So both these parameters, mechanistic parameters, are correlated with the performance. That means this is a performance-based design which has been part of the IFC 37. And this is a very important slide again, uh, which is a part of uh, clause 3.4 of the IRC 37. We state that, see, if we are designing as per the 37 crust, so we are taking care of the rutting and the fatigue characteristics. But even after that, there are the certain rutting distresses within the bituminous layers and certain type of the crackings also within the bituminous layer which has been observed. And that means it is not only the structural design or in other words you can say that the mix design should be the integrate part of the structural design of the payments. That is the bottom most, the most important line of the IRC 37 2018 that the mix design should be the integral part of the structural design of the payments. So whatever the mix we are designing either for any of the layers that should be the uh, integral part that should be correlated with the structural design of the payment. And in the guidelines of 2012 and 18, the various volumetric properties of the mixes that has been incorporated in the structural design of the payment. So this is what uh, the statement is. So by making these distresses, that is again, that again causes the rutting. But that rutting is within the bituminous layers and the cracking within the bituminous layers. But the earlier one rutting is from the subgraded struts. So these distresses are considered by integrating the mix design into the structural design by incorporating the mix polymetric parameters and by making the suitable recommendations about the choice of the binder. So I will just, like this is IIT paper compositions, you are going to uh, see this slide many of times in the many of the lectures. There will be a certain uh, portion which is required to make the flow of the presentation. So these are the two points which I am saying, the vertical strain on the subgrade, you are saying the two points on the, above the subgrade which are responsible for writing and tensile strain at the bottom of the bottom bituminous layer responsible for the fatigue crackings in the payment. So this you will learn, there is a software given along with the IRC 37, there is the lecture as well as the demo will be there in the, after the inaugural sessions in the last lecture and after the lunch the demo training sessions for the IIT PAVE. So this is a software which we are used to analyze our flexible payments as per the IRC guidelines. So satisfactory performance. Now how this has been developed, that's already been discussed, uh, this was the first code in 1970 totally based upon experience certain graph lines are given. But then it moved to the further one in the 1984, the first revision, which is the second version of the code, the 30 MSA traffic, million standard excels, 30 million standard excel repetitions in the design life. So that part has been taken care of the traffic up to only 30 MSA. And, but again, it is based upon empirical one. The first one in 2001 is certainly based upon certain critical distresses such as rutting and fatigue and traffic up to 150 MSA consider for that. But the main part, the major reason that is in 2012 that that is based upon mechanistic empirical traffic more than 150 perpetual payments and other concepts have been considered various layer composition. That is what I was saying earlier. Not only that one composition of subgrade GSB, WMM, DBM and BC. There are many different composition which Dr. Bose is going to discuss about cement treated bases, cement treated sub bases. There are five different other compositions also possible uh, which uh, is suggested by the IRC 37 and which is now many of the contractors, concessionaires are using uh, some of the sections out of that. So, well now, one thing is, as we know that there is a two criteria, rutting and fatigue, the code has given us the maximum value of the strain. The so maximum value of the vertical strain, which is responsible for rutting, and the maximum value of the horizontal tensile strain, which is caused for the responsible for the fatigue. So, both the equations, the allowable values, we can get from these equations which have been given in the code. So, allowable value of the fatigue, so this is how the cracking, bottom-up cracking and the top-down crackings are there in the codes. So we have to look out that this is responsible, this is the performance parameters of the IIC 37 guidelines. And similarly, the rating, the allowable equation, the limiting strain, uh, the limiting strain value at the top of the subgrade, the equation has been given for corresponding to the rating life. And N where is basically MSA, so million standard excels, the guidelines given for calculating that. So this is what the rating is. So we usually measure it with the help of the 3 meter straight edge or the 2 meter straight edge, what is the maximum value of the rut depth to be there. So, and this is from the subgrade, it starts and to the subsequent layers also the rating pattern is visible for that. So what, what were we going with? So two equations are given in the code that is used to calculate the allowable strain values. From IIT pay, what we do is from the software, we will going to calculate the actual strain values. If this is a section which we are proposing. This is the layer composition which we are proposing. So we are going to get the actual strain value. From the code failure equations, we are going to get the limiting or the maximum allowed strain values. So as a satisfactory design, 
the actual values that we are getting from the IIT wave should be less than what is that the previous equations of the fatigue and rating is defining. So that is our criteria for designing the payments. So this is, but still once we are designing it, there are the many premature failing. Like the earlier photograph I have shown only the six month old payment fail in the rating parameters. Then the another major type like this, the failure the of the top layer, of the rating in the top layer. Similarly, the, again the rating parameters, the bitumenous mixture rating. Then the fatigue cracking. So this is a type of the failure on the national highway for corresponding to the fatigue cracking patterns in the bitumenous payments. Again the fatigue cracking, the subgrade rating. So, because of all these limitations, the code has been, as per the 2012, we are designing, but still the payments are failing prematurely. So, the, that is very well taken care in the 2018 guidelines, that why that is part is considered. So, this is how the fifth revision, the present revision, uh, which is the fourth revision and the fifth version of IRC 37. Now, what is the major highlight in this code is, of the 2018 guidelines is, so the bitumenous concrete not suitable for the high volume traffic roads with the normal VG grades. So surprisingly we are designing the sections with the top layer as a bitumenous concrete layer with the VG40 grade of the binder. But in this case it has been defined that the bitumenous concrete payments are not suitable for the high volume traffic roads. Certain other types of the mixes like stone matrix asphalt, gap graded rubber asphalt mixture. So there are different types of the other mixtures which have been proposed to be used in the top surface bearing course. So see this is a very important table of the IRC new guidelines table 9.1. See that the traffic is more than 50 MSA, the recommended wearing course is SMA stone matrix asphalt. That is the recommended uh, wearing surface which is to be proposed and uh, as a binder, as a base the DBM is proposed. So till greater than 50 MSA is the traffic is there which is mainly on the national highways. So SMA is proposed with the modified bitumen. And if we are going to use the bitumenous concrete that is with modified bitumen. Now here comes the problem now is uh, we have to use the bitumenous concrete with the modified binders. With the polymer modified binders or crumb rubber modified binders then only the use of the BC layer is being proposed as the bearing course. Otherwise we have to use the stone matrix asphalt a very good option which is a very good rut resistant mix for the part. So stone matrix, we will discuss that uh, after the another lectures in detail what is stone matrix asphalt means. So it is basically the coarse aggregate, mass stick and the air voids, the mixture of the three components. And if you will see the grading, it is a gap graded type of the mix which has been used. And if you compare both SMA and the BC, you will find the in terms of the aggregate properties, the SMA is uh, use the higher strength aggregates less than 30, less than 25 as compared to BC which use less than 35, less than 30 and less than 24. And IRC SP 79 guidelines propose SMA with a bitumen content of minimum 5.8%, air voids of 4% and it consists of the cellulose fibers also into that. So this is the PPT will be circulated or uploaded on the website so you can have this link. This is what we carried out one of my student, MTech student carried out the thesis on the stone metric asphalt in 2016. So there this is a laboratory investigation as well as the performance evaluation of SMA as a varying course using various synthetic and natural fibers. So here the drain down characteristics and other performance characteristics of the SMA has been studied by that student. Then another part, another is the waste plastic. So recently we completed one project with the Punjab Mandi Board and uh, Punjab Pollution Control Board. They have laid down one stretch uh, by using the waste plastic uh, on somewhere in the village in Ludhiana district under PMGSY scheme. So there they are using the waste plastic, this is a lab photograph, so we are using, they are using two different types of the plastic, uh, the environment that's uh, as a part of the pollution board, they are collecting as a part of the Tandrus Punjab scheme. So they are uh, they are collecting all this plastic uh, waste and uh, we are designing the mixes, this is the guidelines of IRC SP 98 for the use of the waste plastic, so how it is to be used with the different size and the stability requirements of 12 kN. And this is that stretch which I was talking about. So this we laid down and uh, we designed the mix. So basically we checked that mix in the lab and it has been laid there. And we performed a certain performance parameter performance testing on this particular part. And it has been covered under the, the, by NDTV under the Swachh Bharat uh, mission scheme by the NDTV. So that was there. And again with respect to the same link, with respect to the use of the plastic and the use of the crumb rubber, you can go through this Taylor Francis group of my one of my again the student Karan Gupta, myself and Dr. Manik Kumar. 
professor of uh, civil engineering in Thakur. So you can go with that again in the detail which gives the characteristics how we use this uh, waste plastic and the crumb revolt as a different part. Now these guidelines are there but one very important aspect which I already initiated is that the critical evaluation of what we are designing and constructing is very much required. We should need to evaluate what we are designing in terms of the aspect like rating. See this is what I was saying that for the Patiala city we have developed a comprehensive payment maintenance management system. So what we are, we are doing is we are collecting the distress data right from 2012 onwards. So we are collecting the data, we have developed the equations uh, that can predict the value of the distress in the payment. Ki kitna payment kharaab hoga, do year unnis mein, bees mein, ikis mein. So we are calculating based upon the genetic programming equations and there are the certain softwares also available like HTM4 softwares. So we are getting out that values, we are validating with the actual one. So the only drawback it had, uh, uh, with this project is recently the most of the Patiala roads are been getting overlaid. So and even we are now going to utilize that also once it is being overlaid because we already have the four to five year data of the distresses. Now once it is overlaid we are going to check that earlier the value in 2018 was this much of the distress either it's a roughness or any other distresses and once it has been overlaid with say SGBC what will be the reshoot of that value? How much that has come back uh, to the performance aspect? So then the valuation for the national highways, the following way deflectometers, this is again the Patiala roads for the Bupindra road, we are evaluating the condition of the surfaces. Now because the maintenance aspect, which has to be the very much related to the design aspect, because if we are not going to maintain it, the quality of the surface will going to be uh, deteriorated at a much faster rate. And this is the best example, this is basically the output which we get from that project says, so if we are going to maintain at the trigger point one, the surface is depleting, if we are going to maintain it as a trigger point one, so it will reshoot back, the performance will be modified and again it will start deteriorating. So if you see at the top one, the first graph lines, which is the treatment one, the overall cost at the treatment one is going to be 10 times lesser than what the cost is at the treatment. So if it is a request to the government officials, PWD officials, that we should have the certain standards to be defined for the maintenance strategies that what to be implement, what type of the maintenance strategy is to be implement and when to implement. See, we and the academics, we keep on discussing this study. We are doing these projects already three to four MTEX has uh, been covered on these topics. But once we covered with that, we have the database, we come out with a very good management system. But the generally the query of the student will be search, Sara road ek saath overle ho gaya. Jabki hum bata rahe thai ki ye, we are giving the rankings of the priorities of the road. Road maintain hoga, phir road maintain hoga. But overall, mein, there is going to be the overall, like in case in presently, the Patiala, most of the roads around the Thapa, they have been getting uh, overlaid at the same time. So the proper utilization of the funds, proper maintenance strategies, uh, design of the maintenance strategies is a great part. Then the last very important part which I'm going to discuss and soon we are organizing uh, one more workshop on this, that is the dynamic shear rheometer. This is the equipment, this is a photograph of my lab. Uh, with the equipment that is called the dynamic shear rheometer. Now the code says that if you have to use BC, the bituminous concrete, you have to use the modified binders. So if you have to use the modified binders, the code corresponding to the modified binders is not only the penetration values, softening point, ductility values. The specifications corresponding, this is what the rheology is. They basically the dynamic shear rheometer, it is used to calculate the rheological parameters. So rheology is a science of studying the flow and rheometer is a start art of marrying it. So what we are doing is uh, IRC 37 because already discussed they have been uh, uh, providing the recommendations for the modified binders. So we have to study that how these modified binders are going to behave. So normal penetration softening ductility point as, as per IS 73 that is not sufficient for the modified binder. So you require to have this machine as a part of the quality control machine equipment in your labs and your research labs. This is the dynamic shear rheometer. So this is how the codal guidelines of IS 15462 and IRC SP53 is there. We state that how the binder is rut resistant binder. So there's a parameter called G star by sine delta. So if you see in the, this IRC SP53, so G star by sine delta is what we calculate at the particular KPA at what temperature. So minimum 0.1 KPA should be there at a particular frequency of 10 radian per second. And similarly, MSCR test, the Multiple stress creep recovery tests have been performed as per IS15462 guidelines. So this is how we get the results. And recently one more thesis we are doing it with respect to the CRRI uh, in collaboration with CRRI on the cement grouted bituminous mixes where also we are relating the mix with the very high voids 
into the part of that because and there's a modern machine called dynamic fracture energy the Texas overlay test required for now as you know in the subsequent sessions you are going to get the training on the IIT FAPE software the similar code is also there in the US uh, US countries like that is called the can pave so that again we are we are going to discuss we're going to have the question answers round we will going to discuss with dr. Bose and mr. Ja about this that there's a certain parameter in this can pave otherwise most of the parameters which is there in the IIT pave is similar in the US software of analysis payment that is the can pave except that in that we can enter 10 layers here we can enter 90 layers that is a normal differences but the major part one difference which we we'll see is the in case of there we are taking only the dual access but here we can enter because one of the design project of the student carried last year he studied all the commercial vehicles available with the tandem axles so you see uh, as per his investigation of the design report the tandem axle this gap varies from 1.2 to 1.5 meter in most of the commercial vehicles so but in IIT pay we are not entering this dimension as such so and but we are taking care that in the VDF and other calculations but in the analysis in the can pave there is the entry of this dimensions also and along with that one another very important aspect is that the payment analysis can be performed by linear non-linear and viscoelastic parameters but in IIT pave or the IC 37 theory it is more or less more concentrated on the linear one but as with the modified binder it has to be the analysis also should include the viscoelastic characteristics cosmetic. So in the last slide, what we need to see is a such failures. So as per the discussions, why failures occur in spite of the correct implementation of the design. Very important, lot of problems. We are continuously designing the sections for PWD, PUTA and various other departments. So there's a, always a fear that of the type of the failure that is going to occur. We are designing both the PQC as well as the flexible payments. So we have to look that after even after designing as per the guidelines, construction as per the IRC code also there is still the premature failures in the payment. Is it a fault in the selection of the material for construction? Is it the fault in the design of the mixtures on present guidelines or the gradations? Or is it the fault in the quality of construction achieved? Is it the fault in the quality assessment? So we have to look all this that where there is, is a major fault with respect to why there is a premature failure in the payment surfaces. So sustainability is also very important. Uh, daily we are getting certain news that uh, the water groundwater is depleting so the two sections which we are looking at there we already constructed one trial section from the ME thesis of 2016 that is on the porous payments porous concrete payments so which is can be used for the recharge of the groundwater so the water incorporates into that payment surfaces so we can for the parking lots we are in the thapa we are going we are having a new building new infrastructure we are constructing the parking with the porous payments porous concrete payments and similarly the option in the asphalt also the porous asphalt payments can also be used like you have seen the other component so sustainability aspect should always be there once we are there considering the parameter into that so, and one more parameter which I want to discuss along with the sustainability is with respect to not related to the workshop but with respect to the road safety today only when coming from Patiala the news in the Tribune today that the Punjab is losing around 13 deaths per day in the road accident fatalities and they have estimated some cost out of that some rupees fourth some around 4500 crores we lost as a part of the road accidents in the last year 2018 so we have to look out that we are constructing we are constructing the highways by spending 2.5 crores per kilometer so and if that again lead to the such much type of the fatalities we have to look out that aspects also very into that and in the last thank you to uh, this is a tribute Oh, unfortunately we lose two main dignitaries uh, of the transportation engineering one is dr. B.P. Pandey this year and other is professor Justo. so dr. Pandey is uh, who is uh, responsible for this new codal guidelines drafting these guidelines of IRC 37 2018 and professor just to all we know the famous book of transportation engineering Khanna and Justo. so we lose that so there should be a tribute to them also thanks a lot thank you